Why is Cinema doing everything that she's doing? What is the end game? What comes after her pointless position as a senator for this term? Well, I and I think a lot of people have always assumed that it was going to be leaving the Senate and becoming a lobbyist or sitting on some corporate boards cashing in as virtually every senator does. And inevitably, that is what she will actually do. But that's not apparently what she's planning to do. So uh, this has been sort of touched on in reporting previously. But uh, Amy Siskind on Twitter uh, apparently knows some people who know the senator. And here is what she revealed in a thread this morning. Cinema has a highly overinflated ego. Okay, that part is not shocking, but we're gonna get to some stuff that might be. She believes since she has been able to work her way up and accumulate so many academic degrees in a short time, she is a true superstar, head and shoulders above intellectually. The US Senate, she believes, is just a stopping ground for her next step. She doesn't assume she will need to be reelected. This is something I imagined, but assume she would be a consultant or something of that variety. That isn't what Cinema believes will be her next step. With her inflated ego and small circle of friends, many of whom she has alienated and lost, not pushing back, she has been living in an echo chamber. The big money corporate donors are happy to feed this. And what is the result of that? Cinema believes she will be running for president in 2024, I am told. This self styled bipartisanship she believes she speaks for will be her brand to run as the candidate in the middle, not far left or far right. She has convinced herself this is her calling and she has it. We can debate whether she in effect is far right, I would say being like a reactionary that allows actually literally nothing to be done by the government to help the people fits in quite well with their ideology. Um, but uh, Francesca, she sees herself running for president. It doesn't say that she's running as a Democrat necessarily, but she sees herself as running for president. How do you think that would go? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's maybe one step better than Biden Cheney 2024 as <laughs> floated by uh, Thomas Friedman. Thomas, I don't know how I still have my job at the New York Times Friedman. So obviously she wants to run for president, obviously she's got a giant ego. Who is she speaking to? Like, let's say just, just let's say she's not a trash person, which she is, I'm sorry. Imagine you're like, all right, here I am, I'm advising. Yes, Senator Cinema to run for president because people want a middle ground. They don't, they want like a Republican light. They're not MAGA, then they're not Democrats, they're right in the middle, like mm-hmm. uh Hillary Clinton who lost. Uh like like who who is voting for the Republican light? Anna says this all the time, and my God, she's right. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants Kirsten Cinema. The Democratic Party doesn't want Kirsten Cinema. Republicans sure as hell don't want Kirsten Cinema. They they've got like actual like MAGA behind them. Yeah. She's not a Trumper. Who are you talking to? Nobody. Uh-huh. So anyway, I don't know. I think I think Senator Turner would have better ideas than I would. No, no, uh, Francesca, you laying it down. And I mean, just as all of this fervor was about, oh, those bad progressives want to primary the president. Look no further mm-hmm. than the obstructionists in your own corporatist backyard. And compliments of Senator Christian, uh, Kristen Cinema. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Keep running. Yeah. Imagine if Bernie, like, but Biden come in, all these promises. He's wanted to be president for like, I don't know, 80, 90 years. He finally becomes president. Imagine if Bernie had spent the entire time blocking everything that he wanted to do. The media. Would have lost it. Well, Cinema and Mansion have done that, yeah. and they might be a little yeah. bit frustrated. The media, but not that frustrated. They've been kind of okay with it. No, and so John, they get praised, they get lifted, they get invited to the White that's House. That's true. And to, to to the points that we are all making here, even in the midst of this rumor being floated out there, she still gets a call. Mm-hmm. Imagine that yep. she still gets a call by the press. To the, no, to exactly. The <laughs> I mean, what? Can you imagine if uh, Vice President Harris gets passed over for a running mate to, for Kirsten Cinema <laughs> oh, because oh, Biden thinks he needs to tack even more to the right? Yeah. Like, yeah, this Paris is the world we live in. I it's can't just insane that. to me. Yeah, I do I, just want to flag that, like, I don't, I don't really, I just want to say that, like, the same. Actually, Amy Siskind is like one of those people. She tweeted that out. She's just one of those people who actually like score tries to take digs against progressives all the time. Yes. Oh, how come AOC and Ilhan Omar didn't vote for the, you know, uh, the infrastructure bill? How dare they? They must hate roads. 
total bad faith That's stuff. True. So it's interesting because I feel like it's on the Democratic establishment and the think tanks and their consultants. What are you doing about cinema? What are you doing? What what consequences can you enact on Kirsten Cinema? I know a lot there of people are asking Emily's list, which supposedly supports you know pro-choice female candidates across the board. Yeah. Um, but is obviously not by any means a progressive entity. But like, is Emily's list yeah. le- levying any pressure against Kirsten Cinema? Yeah, and like they're not they're not shy about running primaries against progressives or look look what they did to India Walton. Like when they want to destroy someone they don't agree with, they are absolutely brutal. But with cinema, it's I mean, I don't I don't want to be that mean and and so we have to suffer through her having lunches 3 times a week at the White House and Axios articles about her awesome spreadsheets and everything. It's it is insufferable. Um, I am, I'm gonna say something and I'm not worried about this happening because uh, Kirsten Cinema is insane if she thinks she could become the nominee that she would actually have a chance of winning. But um, let's say that hypothetically she does run and the world is insane. So maybe she could, she becomes a Democratic nominee. Um, no, I'm not doing it. That's the line that I draw. I hate people who've drawn those lines in worse circumstances saying that they wouldn't support certain candidates even if it means a fascist takeover of the United States or whatever. But um, no, I'm not supporting Kirsten Cinema. Yeah. not after all that she has done. It's not gonna happen. I'm never gonna have to make good on that promise, but I'm done. I'm out, not gonna do it. So anyway, I do not think that it's gonna happen. Nobody likes her. Literally, like five Nobody people likes. in Arizona like her. She thinks she's gonna take over the nation. I have a feeling that's probably not gonna happen. It, Buttigieg will wipe the floor with her if it comes to it. <laughs> and we know what I think about Buttigieg. First of all, you know she's running third party. Let's mm-hmm. be real. Uh, but she's that's joining totally the forward fine. party. I'm sorry. Is she joining the forward party? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. She, I don't know, what whatever the Green Party is when it's gone stank. It's like the, you know. She was since, Green Party way back, remember? I mean, that was a very, well, very long time ago, but. It was a long time ago, but you know, and, and this is the other thing. And like, I just wanna say, like if she were, if Bernie Sanders, remember obviously, Senator Turner, you remember how much he got called, you're not really a Democrat. You're not yeah. really a Democrat because you're an independent. And yet he's done more for the Democratic Party than probably anyone else in the last four years, yeah. right? Barely. And then if Kirsten Cinema, if Bernie Sanders had run third party when he lost the primary, oh my God. If Kirsten Cinema loses a primary and runs third third party, yeah. watch how the media will be like, I don't know, maybe are we ready? Are we ready for Kirsten Cinema? <laughs> are we ready? But because because her platform is safe, it's corporate friendly, it's safe, it's not even friendly. It is run by yeah. corporations. Yeah. Yeah, and they'll do any and everything to destroy progressives, that's for sure. You know, there's a commentator on the Black News <laughs> Network named Tesla Figaro, and she had tweeted one time, she said, why don't you go after these folks in the same way you come after Nina Turner? Mm-hmm. Go after these corporatists in the same way you come after Nina Turner and other progressives. How about that? Why don't they just do that? Yeah. If they did that, Cinema and Mansion would be nowhere near the White House. And let me add this point: Where are their the colleagues in the Senate, with the exception of Senator Sanders, because he he you know he bringing the noise. But where are them other ones at? I would be giving Cinema and Mansion hell. You hear me? Yeah. About what they are doing. But the reason why they are not doing that is because some of them are hiding behind yeah. Manchinema. Yeah. Yeah, and the people who aren't in elect office, um, you know, they they may not love cinema necessarily. There might be a couple pieces of legislation they wish would, that would get passed. If they had, if they could press a button and get rid of her, maybe they would. But um, if she wins, how bad is that for them? They're still rich. That's right. Okay, and so sure, the Demo- the Republicans take over as a result, and Democrats can never win another election. But what does that mean to a rich kind of liberal? Yeah, they'll outlaw abortion and they'll have to fly, you know, a kid who wants an abortion to Belgium or something, but they'll still be rich. What's the difference to them? Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, they'd prefer the late night jokes under the next fascist. So as long as, you know, those shows were allowed to be on. So yeah, these people, like, don't assume that all these people are our allies. They, this is a game to them. It's not life and death. The stakes aren't that high. 
I'm not too worried about her third party run, by the way, because again, nobody would vote for nobody. her. Nobody. Yeah, We'd I'm, to I'm gonna to run her. third party and tank tank everything too. No, nobody's worried about that. Well, I, don't, I don't know, John. I mean, she is in the United States Senate, so somebody voted for her for sure. She'll get a few votes, you but are, not you are enough. Right. You are right. But well, they voted for her. But she, Arizona, get your senator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The <laughs> Florida are, of the West. You know, Mm. They and they are. They're they're you know. I think yeah. like you know, Representative Gallegos is thinking about a run. There's other people thinking about a primary run. The time to start is yesterday, obviously yeah. on that. Oh. Um, but I I do think that. Uh, I feel like when Cinema was elected, I don't know, Senator Turner, maybe you have a better thought. When she was elected, it was very much a blue no matter who, and it still is. Oftentimes people, oh, blue no matter who. And I think thanks to Bernie Sanders, thanks to Nina Turner, thanks to the squad, thanks to a new a Democrat showing that there is a different way, that there is a progressive way. Cinema's not obviously is is not holding up to the the Snimal test, right? For Democrats, so blue, no matter who, out the window. It is what are you standing for, and how can we hold you accountable? That's why when people take pledges that they will not accept fossil fuel money or dark money or big corporate PAC money, that matters. Yeah. That means something. When Cinema was elected, she didn't have to make those promises, yeah. right? But we're in a different moment now, so it's good. And we, but we have to be more eyes wide open about these Democrats that we elect. Exactly. We do, Francesca, and blue no matter who can get you killed. And that's not hyperbole, that's, that's not over the top. You think about the fact that over there in that Senate, first of all, the Build Back Better, which was already gutted, is gutted even more and it's resting over there. You got those two saying, oh, you know, expanding the child's tax credit. Well, maybe, maybe not. Right. You know, um, not pushing for lowering prescription drugs for people in this country, both young and seasoned, who need medicine to either live, like flat out live, or to enhance their quality of life. Nope, nope, nope not going to do it. All the yeah. way to what's happening now, trampling over voting rights for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. So blue no matter who can get you killed, literally. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.